Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go through our last linked list operation, which is destroy list. So right now, the way we have our code is, unless the programmer goes through and makes sure that all of the nodes are deleted, perhaps by our deleted front, our delete node, or our deleted end, we're gonna have a memory leak. In fact, the state of the code right now has a memory leak. Let's take a look at it. So here, we're declaring that there are three nodes in the list in the order of 3, 5, 12, and then printing out the list. Every one of these insert at front calls is using the new keyword to dynamically allocate a node on the heap. So as you know, every time you have a new use, you should also have a delete use to properly free that memory. We're not freeing that memory here, so we have a memory leak. This linked list list object is going to be deallocated when this main function exits. That means its destructor is going to execute, and that's where we, as a responsible programmer, should go through and delete any nodes that are still in the list. So let me show you how you can test to see if your code has a memory leak or not. So I'm going to compile this, and then I'm going to use this clever little tool called Valgrind. So what Valgrind does is it accepts your program executable and it runs it keeping track of all of your dynamic memory allocations. And at the end of your program execution, if you didn't properly free some of your memory, it will tell you. So let's take a look. Leak summary, it says definitely lost 16 bytes in one block and indirectly lost 32 bytes in two blocks. Okay, so we've got 48 bytes lost, and we know we have three nodes that we didn't free. So 48 divided by three is 16 bytes. So it makes us think that perhaps each one of these nodes takes up 16 bytes of space. So let's test that theory. In the constructor, I'm gonna simply print out the size of our node struct. So this will tell us how many bytes it takes in order to store a node. So you can see here that in fact, it does take 16 bytes in order to store a node struct. So why 16 bytes? Well, if we head over to linklist.h where we defined our node, we'll see that there's four bytes for this integer and there's eight bytes for this node pointer. So eight and four is not 16, it's 12, right? So why is it 12 and not 16? Well, the compiler has a lot of optimization techniques that it does, and this is one of them. In order to better align memory, it will sometimes make these nodes or these blocks uh, larger than they need to be in order to make it more efficient to access them in memory later. So that's a case of what's happening here. All right, so back to the destructor. I've had this to do here ever since the beginning of our linked list videos where I said we need to free each node's memory in the list, right? Make sure we don't have a memory leak. So that's our goal. We'll write some code here so that we walk through, free each node's memory, and then we'll run Valgrind again, and hopefully we'll have all bytes free. All right, so let's trace through the destroy list algorithm, and then we will implement it. So what we need to do is we need to walk through each one of these nodes and delete it as we go. But the key is we can't delete the node without saving its next pointer's value so we have a link or the address to the next node. So let's say, for example, that our cur node points here. So cur node has this data value and it also has this link to the next node in the list. If we were to just delete cur node, we would also lose this link. Then all this memory over here would be lost. It would be a memory leak. So we wanna make sure that we store this link right here before we delete cur node. So in order to do that, we're gonna introduce another pointer, which we'll call next node. So as long as cur node isn't null, which means we have a node to delete, 
then we'll have next node store the next node, right? We'll follow this link right here in order to save the memory address of the next node. And then we'll come and we will delete per node, but we won't lose the rest of the list because we stored the next node in next node. All right. We will then advance cur node as part of our progress towards our Boolean condition being false so that it points to the same node that next node points to. And then we repeat. We find out is cur node not equal to null? That is true. So we're going to save cur node's next pointer in next node. So we're going to update this link to point here. We can now safely delete Cur node. We can update cur node as part of our progress towards our Boolean condition being false so that it points to the same node as next node. We're on our next iteration of our loop and we test is cur node not equal to null? That is true. So we do have a node to delete. So we want to make sure that we save its next pointer using next node. So next node will point to null, which is okay. We can now safely delete cur node. It is gone. We update cur node to point to the same node as next node, which is null, but that's okay because we're going to test for it. Our next iteration of our loop, we test for cur node not equal to null. That is false, so we break out of the loop. And as you can see, we successfully freed all three of the nodes in our list. So let me take a little note over here about what that while condition is that we were using to walk through the list. So we were saying while cur node is not equal to null, there is something to delete. Before we would do the delete, we would be sure to save in new node, cur node's next pointer. Then we could delete cur node. That's what we did with the big purple X's. And then lastly, as part of our progress towards our Boolean condition being false, we would advance cur node to next node. So that's the heart of our algorithm right there. Let's head over to our code and code it up. All right, so we're going to need a node pointer for cur node, which will start at head. We're going to need a node pointer for our next node, which will start at null. We'll advance it once we know that cur node, meaning head, isn't null. There is something in the list to delete. So here's our Boolean condition. While our cur node is not equal to null, we want to save the link to the next node so that we don't lose it. So next node will store cur nodes, next pointer. Now we can safely delete cur node. And as part of our progress towards our Boolean condition being false, we've got to advance cur node so that eventually it is null. So we will assign to cur node next node. All right, that's our algorithm. Let's compile and run it. Looks the same as before, but now we don't have a memory leak and we will test that by using Valgrind. So Valgrind executes, it says heap summary in use at exit zero bytes in zero blocks. All heap blocks were freed, no leaks are possible. And that's always what we wanna see. We don't have any memory leaks in our program. So the implementation of destroy list in our linked list destructor is our last operation to implement. We now have a fairly robust and complete implementation of a singly linked list. The next video is going to go over some variations of linked lists. So you heard me just say singly linked. We could have a doubly linked list where in addition to a next pointer, we have a prev pointer and the prev pointer points to the previous node in the list. 
you can think about how that might be helpful for some of these algorithms where we had to maintain our own pre pointer like we did right here. Another variation is a circular linked list where the last node in the list points to the first node in the list and your head can really be anywhere in the list. You won't lose any of your nodes. So stay tuned for those two variations of linked lists in our next video. Thanks for watching.